Hello, welcome to Agri Science class today. My name is Emmanuel Wido. In today's class, we are looking at the theme animal science and the topic beekeeping. The first part of this lesson is to enable you state the meaning of apiculture, otherwise known as beekeeping. Then you should be able to list the different types of bees. Then you should further be able to state various methods of keeping bees and the equipment used. And then lastly, you should be able to state the importance of beekeeping. If you look around you, you will most variably find insects. They could be creeping or flying insects, such as ants, butterflies, and the bee. This class will focus on the bee and why the bee is a very important insect to humans. Now, there are various reasons why people keep bees because of its economic importance. Also, bees can cause harm to humans if we do not take time while keeping them. So this class will focus on educating you on the species of insects called the bees and why humans try to keep them in order to derive some benefits from them. So what then is beekeeping? The term beekeeping refers to the care and management of bees in man-made hives for various purposes. Now, as we go further, I will tell you what a hive is. Now, beekeeping is also known as apiculture. And apiculture is derived from a Latin word, apis, which means the bee. Now, bees have great economic importance to man. The honey you use for making your tea is a product of the bee. And that's why people keep the bee. Bees also help in pollinating the beautiful flowers you have in your garden. So you see why people exert so much energy in keeping bees, even when they know that the bee can actually stink them when they try to do so. Going further, let's look at what bees are. Bees are flying insects that look more like your wasps or the ants. They look like the ants, but they can fly. You also know that there are some ants that can fly. But then, do people keep ants for economic importance? I don't think so. So, why the bee? This is because of the numerous products that the bees provide. Not just honey. We also have bee wax and bee bread. So, know that this class will give you a wide understanding of why people keep bees. Because you get to find out the products that bees can actually give you. There are about 20,000 species of bees around the world. And these bees come with their own economic importance. Now, a typical bee family, known as the bee colony, is made up of just the queen bee, the worker bee, and the drone bee. The queen bee and the worker bee are females, but only the queen bee reproduces. The function of the queen bee is just to reproduce. It does not work. It doesn't do any other thing. Function of the queen bee is just to give birth. The worker bee is also a female. She is in charge of taking care of the colony in terms of cleaning it, going out to look for food for the queen bee and the drone bee. That's the function of the worker bee. Now, the drone bee is the only male in the colony. The function of the drone bee is to mate with the queen bee. That's the only function of the drone bee because that's the only male in the colony. Now let's look at what bees are. Bees are insects and they belong to the kingdom animal, the phylum Anthropodia, the order Hypnoptera, the class Insecta, the family Apidia, and the genus Apis. You need to know this about the bee. 
Now, bees are classified based on their location. So we have two classes of bees. We have the local bees and the exotic breeds. The local bees are those you can find naturally around your location or region. You don't need to bring them from one region to another. While the exotic breeds of bees are those that are imported into a new geographical area. So you could have a farmer bringing in bees from country A into country B. Now, those bees are exotic bees because they were brought into a new geographical area. Let's go on to look at some of the species of bees that we have. There are numerous species of bees. If we are to look at each one of them, we may not end the class on beekeeping. But for this class, we will look at just four species of bees. Now we have the orchard bees. Now these bees help in pollination. We also have the carpenter bees. The carpenter bees are basically destroyers. They destroy wood. So when they see a dry wood, they go in and then create a narrow opening so that they can live there and then produce. So we call the carpenter bees destroyers. They destroy wooden plants. Now we have the bumblebees. The bumblebees are big and then they are hairy. Their hairy nature allows them to become good pollinators. Then we also have the honeybees. The honeybees look more like the bumblebees, but then they produce a very important liquid, a sweet liquid at that called honey. The bumblebees do not produce honey, but the honeybee produces honey. That's why it is called the honeybee. So let's look at the orchard bee so that when you see a bee, you may be able to differentiate between the orchard bee, the carpenter bee, or the honeybee. The orchard bees are bees that ranges from 8 to 30 millimeter in length. That's their length. That's how long they are. Now, they are strong and they fly so fast. That makes them good pollinators because they could pick a pollen from Sokoto and travel with that pollen far away down to the south, maybe Port Harcourt. That's how powerful the orchard bees are. So you find them basically where they are flowering plants because bees feed on nectar and it is the nectar that enables them to produce honey. So you should know that honey comes from nectar from flowering plants. Now, they are among the most colored bees. Orchard bees are so colorful. Do you know why? The nectar they take in, they consume, helps in bringing up those bright colors. That means when they see a beautiful red flowering plant and they pick a nectar from there to consume, they might produce sweet and beautiful bees with good red colors. So you will look at this bee and you're saying, wow. That's because it consumed nectar from a colored flowering plant. Now let's look at the next one, which is the carpenter bee. Aha, uh -huh, I told you, the carpenter bee, the destroyer. The carpenter bees are known for burrowing into wood. So they see a dry wood, they don't care who the owner is, they go in there, start eating the wood until they are able to create a tunnel where they can live and probably reproduce there. Now, carpenter bees are of two types. We have the large one and the small carpenter bees. The large one are 13 to 30 millimeter in length, while the small carpenter bees are just 3 to 15 millimeter in length. But don't look at their sizes. Both the big carpenter bees and the small carpenter bees 
are capable of destroying any wooden plants they find. Now, on to the next one, the honeybees. Now, these are the most popular bees on planet Earth, but they represent only a small percentage of the bee species. Do you know why they are popular? It's because they produce honey. And a lot of people use honey for consumption and for producing other valuable items such as your body cream, your soap, etc. So you see why the honeybee is known. Now, the honeybee is about 15 millimeters long and their bodies consist of light and dark stripes which serves as a warning to those coming in to invade their hive. They know they produce a very important liquid. So what do they do? They protect it. So if you must have access to their liquid, then be ready to get stung by the bee. That's why we advise that beekeepers try to wear protective covering whenever they are engaging in beekeeping activities because a sting from a bee could be deadly. Now let's look at the last one, the bumblebee. The bumblebee looks more like the honeybee, like I said before, but they are larger, way larger, and they have hairy bodies, which allows them to quickly pick pollen. This makes them good pollinators. They are 17 to 25 millimeters long. I think they are even the longest or the biggest kind of bees we have. Though the bumblebees look like the honeybees, they don't produce honey. Their work is just to get pollen, help pollinate plants, and then keep species alive. Now, going further, let's look at the beehive. I told you that a lot of people keep bees for various purposes. But how do you keep bees if you do not produce a house for them? They live in the wild. They live in your garden. They survive on their own. But because you want to derive some benefits from them, you have to provide a man-made habitat for them. And that's what a beehive is. A beehive is a habitat or a house made for keeping bees. It is a man-made habitat. So we don't have beehives that was created from the beginning. Man made the hive, made the house in order to keep bees for various purposes. A typical beehive is made up of several components and these components help the beekeeper to either extract honey, bee wax, bee pollen, bee bread, etc. A beehive is made up of a hive stand, we'll get to look at all these components later. So we have a hive stand, we have the bottom board, we also have the body, which is the brooder. This is where the bees get to reproduce. Then we have the smaller boxes called the honey supers. That's where honey drops into and then the beekeeper can easily extract. And then we have the cover. The cover enables the beekeeper to protect the bees from other predators. It also houses the bee. You know, it covers the housing, the habitat of the bee. Now let's look at the types of beehives. There are basically two. We have the traditional beehives and then we have the modern beehives. For this class, we will look at the traditional beehive. And we are considering five of them, which are the grass hive, the guard hive, the log hive, the barrel hive, and then the clay pot hive. So let's look at the grass hive. This involves the use of hay, dry grasses, to make a cylindrical shaped house, just like the thatch houses you find in the villages. Little like that for the keeping of bees. Now, the hay hive or the grass hive 
can only be used for a year. This is because the grasses will wither away. And when they do, the beekeeper needs to look for a fresh hay to make another hive for beekeeping. So you see why traditional beehives are not so durable for beekeeping. Then we have the next one, the gourd hive. The gourd hive involves the use of gourds which look like calabash. Now you have seen a calabash before. Calabash, the one they use in putting drinks during traditional marriages. That's the one I'm talking about. Now they look more like that. Now you see that the calabash has an opening. That's how the gut looks like. That opening serves as an entrance for the bee. But the problem is, when the beekeeper wants to harvest honey, he needs to break it to do so. And when you break your guard hive, it means you have to make another one. So you see why most beekeepers do not use the guard hive because you have to destroy it if you must get your product which come from the bees. And let's look at the next one, the log hive. The log hive is the use of woods as a habitat for keeping bees. Now, you could either use the palmaria palm. Now, the palmaria palm comes with an opening, a tunnel. So it allows the beekeeper to naturally stock in bees or attract bees into the palm. Now, you also have the use of cylindrical logs. In this case, you're cutting a log of wood down and then you carefully drill out a hollow so that you can use it as a hive for keeping bees. Going further, we have the barrel hive. The barrel hive is the use of metallic or wooden barrels for keeping bees. So you have this big drum you use in putting your water and then you no longer have a need for it. You could turn it into a beehive rather than discarding it. A typical drum has an outer opening and then a bottom. When using barrels as a hive for keeping bees, the beekeeper needs to cut off and make sure that there are openings at both ends. This is to enable the beekeeper stack in hollow wood, which look more like your bamboo sticks. Now, the bamboo stick has an opening, and that opening is what the bees will use as an habitat. When they live there, they'll be able to reproduce and also produce the products needed by the beekeeper. Now, going further, we have the clay pot hive. I'm sure you must have seen grandma's clay pot. That's how the clay pot looks like. For the clay pot, it is the most durable and the cheapest among the traditional beehives. How is the clay pot hive made? Now, the clay pot is a normal clay pot we use in the village to cook and then probably put water. But then, the beekeeper needs to use cow dung in order to lubricate the clay pot. Why? This is to serve as glue. Because when the clay dries up, it cannot attract or hold on to the bees when they come in. But when you use the dung, the cow dung, the cow feces, to lubricate the clay pot, it serves as a glue. So when the bees come into the clay pot, they get attached to the clay pot and they can no longer fly away. So they remain there and then produce the products needed by the beekeeper. With that, we have come to the end of our class. Before we go, let's take a quick summary of what we have learned today. In today's class, we learned that beekeeping is the care and management of bees for pollination and for producing honey. We also learned that bees are insects which are known for producing honey 
and aiding pollination in plants. Next, we learned that beekeeping is the care and management of bees in man-made hives to produce honey, bee venom, bee wax, and other bee products. Next, we learned that a beehive is a habitat or a house made for keeping bees. Furthermore, we learned that the two types of beehives are the traditional and the modern beehives. And lastly, we learned that grass hive, log hive, the barrel hive are some examples of traditional beehives. In order to ensure that you have learned something in today's class, let's attempt some questions. Question one. The care and management of bees for various purposes is known as B, options. A, hospitality. Option B, housing. Option C, management. Or option D, keeping. The correct answer to question number one is option D. The care and management of bees for various purposes is known as beekeeping. Question number two. Dash bees burrow into woods, thereby causing damage in them. Option A, the bumblebees. Option B, the orchard bees. Option C, the carpenter bees. Or option D, the honey bees. The right answer to question number two is option C, the carpenter bees. This is where we draw the curtain in today's agri-science class. I hope you learned something today about beekeeping. Until I come your way again in another agri-science class. Bye-bye.